First, thank you very much for the kind introduction and everyone for being here. Also for Ireland, the Mission in Ireland, New to co-sponsoring this presentation. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be brief. As Sharon said, um, we I'm giving a brief overview of what we have as the fourth draft treaty. This is an evolving text as was already uh, highlighted by the previous speakers. So um, also a change in text by nature. Yeah, so uh, what's in the text that Sharon showed so um, good and so proudly as well? Uh, it's uh, a draft treaty and uh, it's a regular treaty that adds upon what we already have there. So uh, we have prohibitions, we have peaceful uses, we have some additional elements related to dual use materials, remediation of tax, environmental population. And, uh, and uh, oh, do, okay, so yeah, <laughs> sorry for the sorry. Can, can you hear me? It's, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this uh, treaty also by nature, adds upon is a create a new stuff as it adds not only nuclear prohibitions but also considerations on chemical and biological weapons which is in the mandate since 72 since 1995 by the NPT so uh, two main points that I'm going to highlight in this presentation one is the creation of a regional intergovernmental organization what we called mito mito not the our organization, but the one that should be created by states when the treaty is in force or when a treaty is in force, not necessarily this one, but yeah, this is as a start of conversation, as we said. Um, this organization in this new draft treaty also has a common system, what we call common in the sense of shared system by states that are part of the treaty. So, um, without much going, the organization itself we propose is a regional organization by states, inclusive organizations with other entities, like, for example, also access to civil society and many other functions. It has three main aims, and we call here functions is one first, create trust building among states. And this by itself is already a great ambition since there is no organization so far that comprehends all the treaty, the countries that are involved in this process. And according to the resolution that established the mandate for that, we have the, the member states of the Arab League, 23 states, plus Iran and Israel. Um, so we need an organization to implement and coordinate between those countries. Capacity building means creating the staff and bureaucracy and verification monitoring, which is the second layer or the common system as I come to say now. So uh, this system that we imagine in this treaty is in an annex and it also in the text itself within articles that are related to that is guided by three principles. One is complementarity as highlighted by Tarek in his presentation we should make good use of the obligations and of the structures that are already there. We don't want to substitute anything, we want to complement those already there, including the IAEA and also the CPNW. And uh, as highlighted by Ambassador Kelly, we also include biological weapons and biological technology and kind, some kind of verifications on that, which is something new. And we all see by the pandemic that we're current facing, the more relevant with time. Um, yeah, second one is coordination between states. As I said, there is no organization that can function as a coordination structure between them, since there is no organization that comprises the regional states. And here I'm thinking about regional. And also coordination between different kinds of categories of weapons. So we have three main categories, as I said, and, and as also stated by the mandate of the negotiation. Monitoring and verification, which is something that is based on nuclear, have other models for that, but also goes beyond to other kinds of materials. And that's where the verification monitoring procedures could also be interesting. We imagine uh, missions at, on an ad hoc basis with inspectors that are already there, 
this is also open to discussions. We also had voluntary measures adopted by states, and we imagine what could this second layer, this system, add upon what's already there in the international regimes. So guidelines, for example, supporting, which is the most important, supporting for implementation of obligations that are already existing, uh, creation of early warning systems, for example, for the biological materials and for spread of biological um, elements. Also guidelines and important supporting implementation of obligations that are already there. So uh, I'm gonna stop here and I thank you a lot for hearing to me and looking forward to the Q&A.